beg you to just stand up with me i'm sure you remember this song i can't sing but with all our voices together we're going to have just a bit of fun would you please please stand with me all right basic school song as a serious jamaican woman i rediscovered it and i have been singing it because i need to put a smile on my face anybody remember that song okie pokey <laughs> All right, who can sing it with me? Because I'm not, I'm a talker, not a singer. Can you come? Do you know it? Yes, you. All right, I'm going to work with my voice then. You can? Come. Stop. All right, after two, one, two. You put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, you put your right hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the okey pokey and you turn yourself around. And that's what it's all about. Okey pokey, put your left hand in, you put your left hand out, you put your left hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the okey pokey and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. Okey pokey, put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, you put your right foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the okey pokey and you turn yourself around. And that's what it's all about. Okey pokey, put your left foot in, you put your left foot out. You put your left foot in and you shake it all about. You do the okey pokey and you turn yourself around. And that's what it's all about. Okey pokey! Thank you so much. <laughs> A good friend of mine said, smile more. And my children, we sat down in December with my husband and we said, what are some of the things that we need to do more for 2015? And my children said, we need to smile more. And so one of my missions for 2015 is to smile more, because I tend to be very serious. All right, so my mission is to talk about women in faith and one of the things all kinds of things have, have crossed my mind to talk about women in faith we know whether we're Christians or not that the Bible says that faith is the evidence of things we hope for but we have not yet seen and one of the things that I've discovered as a woman in faith is that if you have not got faith, you really haven't got anything. Yeah. Because there are so many things that we are hoping for to become substance. And in some cases, we have to wait for years. Yeah. Is there anybody here who can testify? Yes. You're waiting for a house. You dream it long time ago. But it took 10 years, but you eventually stepped in. And for those who haven't gotten it yet, it is coming. Amen. Okay? Amen. So, one of the things when you talk about faith, for me, what is important is a dream. Quite recently, I was listening to another motivation speaker, a male, Wint, Wintley Phipps. And he's from Trinidad, but he has sang for every U.S. president for years. I listened to him talk about his life in Trinidad, how poor he was, and had this little bicycle wheel that he would sit in his yard and dream. And he would dream that he's in all these various countries across the world. As I sat and I listened to him, I thought to myself, how many of us were really allowed to dream? As children, sometimes we're not used to getting what we dream and therefore we stop dreaming. Some of us, it was dreaming about the perfect doll. And your parents, and when you share the dream, they said, so how are we going to get that money? Or there are other things in life that are more important. So after a while, some people are not used to getting what they want. So they said, why dream? But I've discovered that for us to be able to move ahead into the things that we're hoping for, there must be a dream. 
I've also discovered that there are many people who don't believe in dreams. I'm not here to convince you if you are not. But I want to tell you that even the counselors that are here today will find it difficult to help anyone who has issues that don't dream. It makes it more difficult because the mind is important and what goes on in it while you're asleep that gives us clues into what you're thinking and what your life is all about. So I want to promote dreaming. The Bible says that you should write the vision for though it tarries, I don't like the word tarry, <laughs> but it does tarry in some cases, though it tarries, it shall surely come to pass. So if you have no dream and you have no vision, what really is going to come to pass? So please do not be afraid to dream, whether it's in the sleep-like state or you're sitting here thinking, boy, I want a brand new 2015 car. I can see myself sitting in it already. I can smell the leather. Be encouraged, dream, because that's what's going to become reality. One of the things that I want to also share with you is how your experiences from the past affect your dreams. Yes, we go to church, a lot of us, and we get in the spirit and we speak in tongues and we believe in the Holy Ghost. But when it's all over and you have a one-to-one -one conversation with that person, you'll find that the very things they were in the spirit about, they now no longer believe. And many times what you find is that it's the experiences from the past. We are literally walking and wrestling with all the negative things that we were told. And as I move around and I talk to people all the time, you know, I could just be paid for talking. I would be wealthy because I do a lot of it, right? People are out there struggling. How many persons were told that you're too fat? Or you're too slim? Or your nose not straight enough? Or how come your mom is so brown and your daddy so this and you came out this way? Or maybe you had a dream that you wanted to be a doctor and somebody said to you, so where are we going to get the money from? Or why are you so ambitious? And by saying those things, what people have done over the years, sometimes it's our own 